Hey, this is Chris with Record Talk. We're going to do yet another episode of the five records in five minutes. Five in five. Yes. Today, theme, year 2002. That was 20 years ago. And so, uh, the first three I'm going to show are going to be uh, all bands with big discographies. Um, and in the case of two of the three are ones that I really don't listen to that often. The last two are also going to be from bands with fairly decent sized discographies that are going to be my favorites. The two favorites are going to be on vinyl. But let's start off with the CDs. We're already almost a minute in. So we've got some Weezer with some Maladroit from 2002. Um, this is about the time I actually probably start losing interest in Weezer. I certainly don't like this as much as like the Blue Album or Pinkerton or the Green Album. And, um, in fact, I don't actually have anything by Weezer that came after this particular record. I do happen to have uh, a, ver a rarity, if it will focus. I have number 323,381, and one of these enhanced CDs. That was a thing then. Um, Sonic Youth, uh, Murray Street. Um, I mean, people never really talk about Murray Street when they're talking about Sonic Youth. I think this is actually not a bad album. Uh, Empty Page and Disconnection Notice, those first couple of songs are really cool. I mean, it's certainly not their strongest album, but it's certainly not their weakest album. The one time I saw Sonic Youth play live was in 2003, so... Um, they were playing some of these songs then, and oh look, I'm out of focus. Let's see. Okay, we'll try to get the focus back. And then the next one, this falls under the camp of an album I don't like as much as I probably should and feel like I should. Uh, we've got the nice slipcase here. So this is Yankee Hotel Foxtrot by Wilco. I know this is generally considered to be Wilco's uh, classic album. It's hard to get out of the damn slipcase. I don't have the fancy multi-disc vinyl version that I know some people have. Um, I'll be honest, I liked Uncle Tupelo more than I liked uh, Wilco or Sunvolt, either of the uh, follow-up bands, when it was probably a little bit rawer, more obvious um, rootsy elements in it. Um, this is one of those albums I'm thinking at some point I'm going to listen to it and it's going to click more than it's clicked for me. But now let's get into the two that I really like. These are probably my two favorite albums from the year 2002. Um, so we've got, I know we've got Glare with the plastic sleeve. We've got the Vinyl Me Please version, Queens of the Stone Age, Songs for the Deaf. I used to play the CD version of this a lot. And this is just great from cover to cover. Uh, song for the Dead, Go With the Flow, another love song. Um, I think this was really the pinnacle of their career. Um, do we have anything cool to show you in the gatefold? Oh, we got, you know, there's like the car radio theme um, with sort of the, the, the DJ talk sort of interspersing in between songs. But yeah, uh, real good hard rock from an era where I wasn't liking much of the hard rock that was coming out. But that's going to take me to my favorite album of 2022, uh, Slater Kinney, One Beat. I might be a little bit of a weirdo, but I um, rated this as my favorite of the Slater Kinney catalog. Light Rail Coyote, I would say, is probably my favorite Um Slater Kenny song, uh, sympathy is just uh, that's a that's a real uh, heartstring puller, real emotional song there. Um, Pristina, combat rock, uh, the title song one beat. Um, I think Slater Kenny was really on a roll from about 1997 to about uh, 2005. They came back with one good album, and they've kind of lost the plot. Their last couple albums, so there's five records in five minutes from 2002.